Howdy hi, welcome everybody, it's your old pal Eugene. This is my channel, Hughes Motorized. Now this is part four of how to install an engine kit on a bicycle making you a motorized bicycle. Now if you're just itching, raring to go and wanting to install your, uh, your motor kit, Part seven's where the uh, engine starts hitting the frame and we start bolting it all together. This part four is going to cover suggested upgrades, things you may want to get to make your life a little bit easier in keeping your motorized bicycle going. Now the first thing you want to consider is a generic hardware kit for your engine. Why? Well, a complete hardware kit is a great thing to have around because as you learn the intricacies of these engines here, you'll find out that some of these fasteners are pretty doggone hard to get off because they tighten them up so tight at the factory. And if you drop something and it falls into the abyss, you always will have a spare. You also want to get some six millimeter nylock nuts because the nylock helps fight vibration related issues of the hardware coming loose that's always going to be a battle with these engines here to go along with that you want to get some six millimeter flat washers and six millimeter lock washers speaking of locking you want to get some thread locking compound get the blue don't get the red the red is permanent do not get the red repeat after me i will not get the red one of the items that may or may not be an option for you, you may absolutely require it, is an engine mount. So hopefully I can help you sort through that there. There are a couple of different styles available. I will leave a link down below to uh, my website where I will detail some of the dimensions on these here that might help you decide what engine mount you might need for your application. Now the one in the center here that I'm measuring, that is called the wide mount bracket. And that is for the two inch wide down tube. It'll go up to that. The CNC one here on the right that I'm measuring fits an inch and a half down tube. Plus it has the ability to pivot. The one on the left is called a universal mounting bracket. And that may give you a little bit extra reach. But check the links down below. This little gizmo I have in my hand here is called an offset intake. And you might need this for an application where there's simply not enough room for the carburetor to go onto your intake and fit underneath your down tube or it blocks the throttle cable from, from going in. You simply just don't have room and it quote unquote offsets the carburetor oh, about two inches to the right and then back a little bit and enables you to get your doggone carburetor mounted. Make note there are three different styles of offset intakes at least and it's based upon the width a part of the mounting studs on the intake 32 millimeter there's one that's a 40 millimeter and then there's a universal one that will fit both the 32 millimeter width and the 40 millimeter width mounting studs make sure you get the correct one may i talk with you a moment about gaskets yes you if you're running a two-stroke engine, you're going to need a complete gasket set. These things are cheap. Get you a couple of them. One upgrade I highly recommend you get is this here. This is an O2 gasket for a Toyota Land Cruiser, which fits the exhaust gasket. It's a lot more robust than the paper gasket. Dorman, number 47021. If you want, I'll put some links down below but get you some gaskets. This is one of the most cussed at items on a motorized bicycle, and that is the cheap plastic throttle housing. Throw it in the trash. Get you an all metal MGO 7 8 inch throttle assembly. You remove the cable adapter from it. You get you an 11 32nd inch drill, drill it out. We're gonna tap it using a 10 millimeter by 1.25 tap. Tap that hole, it will now accept the stock throttle cable. If you don't want to do the drilling and tapping, hell, I'll sell you one. Check the link below. All right, you're going to be running a two-stroke engine. You know you're going to need to be mixing your oil and gas. Here's something I think you'll find indispensable. Get you a 150 milliliter syringe. That way you can measure it properly. Get a good premix going here. 40 to 1 ratio minimum. 
I run the cheapest oil I can get my hands on. A good synthetic oil, you can go 50 to 1 ratio, but don't go any richer than 40 to 1, even from day one. That is 95 milliliters per gallon. I might even recommend you get you a 30 milliliter syringe to keep in a tool pouch on your bike. That way, if you have a problem on the road, you can even run regular motor oil. I've got another video on that. I'll leave a link above. One of the first questions people ask about a motorized bike is how fast will it go? Well, I want to ask you something more important. How fast can you stop the damn thing, right? So if you're building on a beach cruiser, and you only have a coaster brake, come on, let's upgrade those brakes, okay? This is a good set. Sunlight sells it. It's a Cruiser MX brake set is what they call it. Uh, sunlight number 12454, 73 to 91 millimeter reach on it will fit most beach cruisers. That way you can have an extra caliper brake on the front. And even if you got a coaster brake, put a set on the rear. Come on, let's be safe. If you're going to ride a motorized bike, you need a spare magneto coil. Some people call it the coil. Some people call it the loop. Some even erroneously call it the magneto. Whatever you want to call it, get one. These guys go out early, go out often. If you've got a no spark condition, this is the first thing I'll check. The white wire on it, cut it off, throw it away. It robs power from your spark. You don't want that. Next up on the list of things you might want to consider is a jet kit. 5 millimeter jet kit, get number 60 through number 80. Some of the kits are pretty limited. You might even want to consider getting a pin vise, a drill set with the small micro drills. That way you can fill the jet with solder and then use the pin vise, a drill, to drill it out to the dimension you need. Now how do you know what size jet you need? Stock jet is a number 70 that comes with most carbs in a stock engine. I might recommend you go with a number 65 jet. That will get your engine running the best it can. You really don't know until you do a plug chop. There are videos on how to do a plug chop. I'm not going to go into that today. Speaking of spark plugs, I recommend you get you an NGK B6 HS. That's for most applications. Take a look at this here. This is the stock fuel line that comes with your kit. It's not so good. Okay, there I said it. After about a couple of months, it's going to start getting brittle and shrink up. And you're going to walk out to your bike one day and it's going to be peeing gas all over the place. So we don't want that. Get you some good 5 millimeter or 3 sixteenths of an inch Tigon or Poly fuel line and also get you some 5 millimeter or 3 sixteenths inch fuel filters. I like the ones that have the little magnet inside. But these, this is something you're going to need sooner or later. Might as well have it on hand. So if you're going to be riding a motorized bike, you're going to get flats. Put you some slime tubes in. You're going to be less likely to get a flat. And if you got a sensitive booty like mine, get you a nice comfy seat. Those cheap seats that come with a lot of bikes, hey, they hurt my butt. I love these vintage leather looking ones, and I like the McCarji seats. They're really nice seats. You can get a good price on them. Be careful. Look out for cars, because hey, when they're driving, they're texting. They ain't looking for you. Take care.